First Chronicles in chapter 17. <coughs> and uh, title tonight of the message is No Thanks, But I Will Build You a House. No Thanks, But I Will Build You a House. And uh, First Chronicles chapter 17. I want to read verses 1 through 10. And uh, it says, Now it came to pass, as David sat at his house, that, that uh, David said unto Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedar, uh, cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains. And uh, Nathan said unto, unto David, Do all that is in thine heart, for God is with thee. And it came to pass at the same night that the word of God came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell David, my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel into uh, uh, I brought uh, I brought up Israel into this day, but have gone uh, from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked, and in all Israel spake I a word unto any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me in house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following uh, the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and I have cut off all the enemies from before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are upon the earth. And I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and they shall be moved no more, neither neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the beginning. And since that time I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. Moreover, I subdue, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord shall build thee up a ho- build thee up house. The Lord shall build thee up house. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, it's a wonderful thing to read the Bible. It's a wonderful thing. Just that's a, that passage there and uh, what Nathan did, what David thought, what uh, the Lord thought, and and the conversation, and uh, where it went, Lord, your word is deep and wonderful, and I pray tonight we would get it and uh, understand it, and you'd speak to us, and and uh, Lord, we just uh, come before you humbly. None of us deserve to hear your word, speak your word, uh, deserve your presence, yet you promise you were two or more gathered, you'd be in the midst of them, and and your word doesn't return void, and uh, your spirit of leading guide us into all truth. We claim these promises and ask for you to work tonight and help us to uh, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Uh, this, David here is kind of interesting. He, he's desiring to build, build God a house. And uh, <clears throat> um, he, 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 David lives in a nice house of cedar. And he, he, he realizes the Ark of the Covenant and God's presence and his, his furniture and everything is dwelling in a tent. And, uh, and he says, man, this isn't right. Why is, why is the Lord living in a tent? I'm living in a nice house of cedar. I want to make him a house. And Nathan said, hey, go ahead and build him a house. And that's great. And, uh, and then God came to Nathan and said, no, no, go tell David um, not to do that. And, and tell him this. He says, look, I've dwelt in a tent and tabernacle and the tents wore out and the tabernacles wore out and all that stuff and I've never asked anybody for anything and I never told the judges why do, why am I dwelling in this thing and you, you all live in regular houses and uh, and I never uh, made a big deal out of it and 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 it just kind of shows the humility of God and uh, it's amazing what we think we deserve and where we put our foot down why do I have to do this when they get to do this and God just sat there dwelling in the tent where people lived in nice houses and just said, eh, that's it. And uh, they'd make a big deal out of it. And he says, uh, so I never required this, David, and uh, it, it's not a big deal. But, you know, if it's not a bad idea since when you thought of him, I'm glad somebody thought of me. And, and it's, it's, it's probably good, um, but I don't want to be this God who's out there just demanding that everybody spoils me. I'm, I'm a servant. Jesus took upon him the form of a servant. And so, yes, it'll get built, but it's not going to be you, David. It'll be uh, somebody from you. It'll be your child, and, and they'll build it for me. You're, you're not the guy I have this. And he explains it in another passage that, uh, you know, 
this is a, a holy place and a sacred place, and you've shed a lot of blood, you've been in a lot of wars, and, and you, you've battled, you've, you've, you've scratched and clawed and fought and killed people and killed all kinds of things, and, 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 and I just want that temple to be built by someone a little different, and, uh, and so we're going to have your son build it. And, uh, and then he goes off and, 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 and talks a little more about what, what he's going to do for David. Um, he did, it's, I think it's interesting that a man after God's own heart, David, considered God. You know, I think that, the, like it says, it's the Hebrews can uh, consider him who endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. I think it's Hebrews 12, 3. And, uh, and lest you be worried and faint in your minds, consider him. And David said, you know, God's, God is not dwelling here. See, David said, I'm good, but God isn't. And that's the way God thinks. God could have been forever happy with never saving mankind. God is self-existent and was there forever before mankind was ever there. Yet God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because we weren't, we weren't doing well. He was considering us. And, uh, uh, you know, as it says in, in Philippians 2, 4, it says, look at every man in the things of himself, but every man also in the things of others. Don't look on your own things, but look on others. And David was a man after God's own heart, and so he, he could have very easily said, man, I've lived in caves, I've lived in the forest, I've lived on mountainsides, I've ran everywhere, I've, li- I've slept out there with the sheep, I've, I've, <clears throat> I've lived a rough life, and now I'm king, I'm comfortable, it's a nice house. Man, thank you, Lord. And that would have been what most everybody does. But David didn't just do that. David said, hmm, I'm doing good, but you know, I look out the window and I see a tent for the God's house, and look at this nice house I'm living in. And Why is the Lord below me in the way he's living? This isn't a pro-. He wasn't just thinking about himself. It's very easy for us to get in our own mindset of how am I doing, how is my family doing, how are my finances doing, and not think about other people, let alone thinking about the Lord. How will God feel about this? How is God, is God happy about this? What is God thoughts about this? Do you ever feel sorry for God, all the people? I mean, I don't like hearing the cussing all the time. God hears every cuss word in the whole world every day. And, and he's holier than I am. And how many, how many times do I fail him? And, it's, and, and you know, the strange thing about backsliding and people failing as Christians nowadays is it's always about them. It's in their nature. It's taught them so much. They say, I just don't like this. I always feel so bad about myself. That's, that's the extent of the badness they feel is they feel, I feel like a failure. I feel bad about myself. They never think about how God feels. It's even in their sin and their failure, they never say, you know, I hurt Jesus. I didn't show him how worthy he was and didn't love him like I should have. If I loved him, I'd keep his commandments, and I don't love God enough. And I, boy, how must God feel when I do that to him after he's done all this to me, for me? But that's maturity that most Christians, it, God's kind of got to just give you a promotion of life of good things to keep you serving him because he doesn't bless you. Most people are so self-centered. It's all about you. Why is God not doing this for me? God is not fair. Like the whole God of the universe just changes nature because you had a bad day. Because... Because the average person is very naturally selfish. David said, I got it good. And man, God's dwelling in a, in a, in a tent. I'm going to build him a nice house. And God was very pleased with that. And, uh, and, 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 and that mindset of thinking about that, instead of just enjoying the blessing, have we considered Christ today? Do we consider him often in our decisions or it's just all about us. But God was pleased that he said he would build. Uh, he would, God was uh, pleased with David. And he said, David, you're not going to be the one to build me a house, but I'm going to build you a house. But it's not going to be a physical house. I'm going to build your family. I'm going to build your future. And, and, and it's beautiful and in verse 10, he says, And since that time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee in house. And he's going to elaborate on that. David went to build God a house, and God said, No, you can't build me a house. Your son will do it, but David, I'm going to build you a house. 
David said, I already got a house. He says, no, I'm not talking about a physical house. You got a house. You got a, you got a physical building, but I'm going to, I'm going to build you as, as like Joshua said to us for me and my house will serve the Lord. He wasn't talking about these timbers are going to be godly here. Um, he was talking about, uh, are you tired tonight? Cause I'm very funny and you're just kind of staring at me. And, uh, and, uh, but he was talking about the timbers and the, and the, and the, and the, the walls. He's talking about my family. And he says, David, I'm going to build your family. Because the house represents the family and the home, and it's all kind of one word we use interchangeably. And, and just, you know, David, you thought about my house. I'm thinking about your house. And I'm going to do amazing things with your family. I'm going to bless your family. I'm going to bless your home, David. I'm going to bless you because of the way you thought of that. And he really went to a new level in the David Covenant. Covenant. He, already, he already anointed him king, but now he says, look, you're gonna, you're gonna, your, your family's gonna be different, and 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 we're gonna do some things with your family. Just some thoughts on this. Number one, just because you did not get exactly what you wanted, does not mean you will not be really blessed. Just because you did not get what you exactly what you wanted, does not mean you will not be really blessed. He says in verse eleven, and, I, and it shall come to pass that when thy days are expired, that thou must go into the uh, go be with thy fathers that I will raise up of thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom, and he shall build me in house, and I will establish his throne forever, and I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, and as I took it away from him who was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. Whoa, <laughs> wow, that's a lot of good promises. Look, hey, David, when Saul messed up, I just cut off his kingdom. I just said, you know what, Saul? I'm done with you. You're not going to finish. You're not going to be here long. Your kids aren't getting your kingdom. I'm done with Saul's family as the king. But David, because you please me, your family is going to have an everlasting covenant with me, and you will have the throne of David forever. He was telling David something he didn't quite understand. David, the Messiah is going to come for your family. That's what's going to happen to you. And, the thro- and, and Jesus will sit on your throne for all eternity. Forever. It's the throne of David. You follow the throne of David. It's one of the great themes of prophecy in the Bible. And you follow the throne of David. It's something that's talked about that's going to be there. And, and, and he says, David, I'm established in your family. And you know what? When your family messes up, I'm not going to cut them off like a cut off Saul. Because you please me. And, and, and you'll find, if you just follow the, the troubles of the kings, you will find God saying, for my servant David's sake, I did not cut them off. And, and so David said, I want to build you a house. God, God said, no, David, you're not the one. Oh, man, I would have built an awesome house. It's been so fun to design God's house. I mean, that would have been awesome. David went from, I'm going to build God a house. God said, no. He went from construction on a building to his family and his children and his children's children and for eternity being blessed. That when his children messed up, God wouldn't just cut them off. When his children were kings, because they were going to stay, that the kings were going to stay in David's family. He says, when they mess up, I'm not going to cut you off. They're going to be able to stay in the throne. I'm going to have mercy on your family that I wouldn't have with another family, David. I'm going to tell you, when, you're, when, you're, when your descendants, when they mess up, I'm not going to treat them. I'm going to put mercy on them. And your son, I know you'll be dead, David, but I'm going to be his father. He's going to be my son. We're going to have a very special relationship. He's going to build me a house. And that, that, that child of yours is going to be very, 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 very special. And David said, okay, I will build a house. I'll take that. Because can you imagine, your choice was, you get to build a building, or your children and your grandchildren or great-great-grandchildren get mercy when they mess up. God becomes a father to them and gives them a special blessing. And your family line continues forever. The Messiah gets put in your family line. And for eternity, the Messiah is on your throne. I would take, I would throw away the construction program. But God said no to David's request. Oh, that's not fair. What does God do what I want? Because maybe God knows better. Maybe God blesses exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. 
you, maybe if you learn to trust God, when something you really, really want, God says no. Because he does say no sometimes. Then you say, well, God must have a plan. Because he got the way better deal. It's like you went to dad and said, dad, can I please, can you please, dad, just get me some old junk or get me an old Ford Granada or a Pinto I'll take right now. I just need a car. And he says, no. But dad, I only know like a $500 car. It's all I want. I don't care how it looks or anything else. And dad pulls up with that big old four-wheel drive, brand new Ford truck. Amen. And you, or Chevy, whichever your biblical preference there is. And, uh, and, and, and you say, or Dodge, if you're Jennifer, or whichever you want. And, and you say, okay, never mind the Pinto, because you got something better. And understand, if you ask your father a bread, he's not going to give you a stone. Prayer is always good. And pleasing God, God, if God says no to his child, look, when I say no to my children, it's not because I don't love my children. It's because I got something better because it's not good for them. And God has unlimited resources. And God says, you know, I'm saying no to you on this day, but boy, am I going to bless you. I like what you wanted there. So don't get too upset when God says no. It was not a rebuke. God reminded him of how pleased he was and how much he was with him. In verse 6, Whithersoever I, uh, I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word against any of the judges, saying, when I uh, c- command to find these people, saying, uh, to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me in house? Now, therefore, um, uh, uh, saying to my servant David, David, um, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep goat, even from following the sheep, and that thou shouldest be a ruler over my people Israel. I've been with thee, whithersoever thou went. And and verse nine, I I ordered a place for my people, and and I wanted to plant them, and 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 I was with them, and I was with you. And David, I, I've been with you, and blessed you, and wherever you've been, I've been there with you. And David was thrilled. Now here's the thing. God said, David, I'm not mad at you. I bless you. I've been with you. Remember that. Remember, David, I'm not going to give you this house, but I've been with you. I didn't ask for this, but you asked. You, you wanted to please me. <laughs> and, and, and you might even surprise God sometime and give him something he didn't demand of you. That's what an offering is, by the way. A tithe is the mandatory thing. The tithe is the Lord's. But you might just say, Jesus, I love you. This is a free will offering. You might say, Jesus, you didn't even tell me to witness that person, but you must love them. I'm just going to go witness them. You don't, just doing your duty to God, okay, but you know, isn't God special enough to do something to please him? Yeah. Going above and beyond? And, and trying to please God and, and things? David's, by the way, and so David gets a no, but God says, I'm not just pleased you, David. I'm going to bless you in a mighty way. And David does not grumble and complain about not getting what he wanted because God can be trusted. And David is thrilled. Watch what he says here in verse 16. <clears throat> and David, uh, the king, came. This is after Nathan said, no, he can't build it, but I'm going to be with you forevermore and all these things. And David, the king, came and, uh, and sat before the Lord and said, who am I, O God? O Lord God, that, and what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And yet this is a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken to thy servant's house for a great while to come, and as regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God, what can David speak more unto thee? For the honor of thy servant, for thou knowest thy servant. <clears throat> And, O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, thou hast done all this greatness, and making known all these great things, O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that uh, we have heard of our ears. He's just praising God for what God did. He's not disappointed with not building the house. He's amazed that God's doing something even better. Verse 24, uh, let, thy, let it even be established. Uh, that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even the God of Israel, and that the house of David, thy servant, be established before thee. For thou, O my God, thou hast told thy servant that thou wilt build him a house. Uh, th- therefore thy servant hath found in his heart to pray before thee. And now, O Lord, thou art God, and hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Now, therefore, let it please thee, please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be 
before thee forever, for thou blessest, bless, uh, <clears throat> blessest, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. David said, I'll take it. Amen. What an amazing God you are. He got to know, but God gave him something better. David, God, David said, God, can I build your house? God said, no, David, but I'm going to build your house. And here's what I'm going to do. And David did not get what he asked for, but he got something better. And he was not disappointed. And if you'll just wait on God and trust the Lord, you'll find out that building a building is nothing compared to family greatness forever blessed. <laughs> but we, <clears throat> we are so self-minded and self-willed, we think if it didn't turn out like I wanted it, it's going to be bad. Because only I can write the book right. Only I can write the right ending. <laughs> and, and, and it's amazing how much you probably miss in God says, no, I can, I'm, I'm going to say no, but I got something better. And you say, no, why? God is unfair. And God says, eh, never mind. Just because you do not get exactly what you wanted does not mean you will not be really blessed. I think that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Number two, when you care for the things of God, the Lord cares for you. Verse ten, and now at this time I commanded, uh, uh, and now since that time I commanded the judges to be over my people of Israel. Moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I will tell thee, the Lord will build thee in house. And then David, you saw him um, in verses 24, 25, 26, saying, "Lord, you're building my house." And, and, and David, please God. And you know what everybody else thought? Everybody else thought, I should have went and said, why, David, why don't you build God a house? <laughs> I'm sure all of you are going, man, he just got his, all these blessings. I never thought about God, you know? He is living in a tent, not living in a house. But when you, when, you, when you think about the things of God and put God first, God blesses you. When you take care of God's things, God takes care of your things. Yeah. Amen. And also, when you put God last, God kind of puts you last. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And that's the way life works. And, and we find this. We see David immediately blessed, chapter 18. <clears throat> All of his enemies around him. In verse 1, now after... After this, it came to pass that David uh, smote the Philistines and subdued them and took Gath and her towns out of the hand of the Philistines. He's, he has victory there, verse 3. And David smote uh, uh, Hadar, uh, uh, Hadar Ezar, king of uh, uh, Zeda and, and uh, Hamath, and, and continues. He, he beats them. He goes further uh, down to verse 6, end of the verse. It says, Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. Verse 13, and he put garrisons in Edom and set all of Edom, uh, and, and uh, all the Edomites became David's servants. Thus the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. Let me take you to 2 Samuel. David just was blessed by God because he put God first. He wrote up pleasing God. He could have got revenge, but he said, that's the Lord's anointed. I'm going to put God first. He just kept putting God first in his life when it was convenient, when it was not easy, when it was inconvenient. Uh, he just always put God first, and he took care of the things of God, and God just always took care of him. And, 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 and that's what happens. When you make sure God's things are taken care of and care for the things of God, God makes sure your things are taken care of and takes care of your things. Watch, just watch Solomon. <clears throat> this son is born, and Solomon is born. And uh, verse 24 of uh, 2 Samuel 12, it says, And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her, and uh, and she became his son, and she called his name Solomon. And it's fascinating. His verse is very specific. God doesn't need to say this, but in, in 2 Samuel 12, 24, it says, And the Lord loved him. God loves everybody. But God just wanted to say, I want everybody to take note of this. I love Solomon. Now, God loved everybody. For God's love of the world, but God said, I want everybody to know, I love Solomon. He had a bad start. He had some immorality in his parents, but this guy's special. And, and I made some special promises to David about him, and I love him. Wow. And, and, and he let that be known uh, very clearly. Let's go to First uh, Chronicles. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> and 22. I just want to show you how David was blessed when he put the Lord first and how God began to bless his family and bless, he specifically said, I'm going to bless your child Solomon. I'm going to be a special father to him and take care of him. And boy, that'd be a comforting thing if you knew as a parent that if you died, whenever you die, God says, I'm taking over. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of them. It'll be fine. Boy, that'd be a comforting thing. That'd be a comforting thing because God can do a lot better job than I do. <laughs> and David had this great promise uh, uh, on Solomon and uh, <clears throat> about how he would be blessed. And uh, in First Chronicles 22, and uh, verse 8, is if the word of the Lord came on uh, him, saying, uh, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars, thou shalt not build me in house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born unto thee, who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. And his name shall be Solomon. You know, they threw away the baby name book. And, uh, uh, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel all of his days. And he shall build a house for my name, and I will, I sh and he shall be my son, and I'll be like a f I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever and ever. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thee, and build thee a house of the Lord thy God, and uh, as he hath said of thee. When the Lord thy God give thee wisdom and understanding, he says, look, Solomon, you're blessed. You're really blessed. And, uh, and that's why you're in this situation. Then Solomon does the same sort of thing. I want you to understand, David pleased God, and God said, oh, you're going to be blessed. You're good. And then all of a sudden, victory and peace and everything was, was taken care of, and God took care of David because David was taking care of God. And then uh, uh, Solomon gets to the point where he's taking over for David, and, and, <clears throat> and he kind of comes in a little bit of turmoil and stuff, and, and he's very young. And this kingdom is at its peak, and it's, it's thriving, and you got mighty men that are very self-willed and strong people all over the kingdom. And, and, and God says, Solomon, you know what? You please me. What do you want me to do for you? And, and, and let's, go, let's go to this passage, 1 Kings chapter 3. And, and Solomon does the smartest thing he could do in 1 Kings chapter 3. <clears throat> In verse 3, And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in his statutes of David his father, only sacrificed burnt offerings and incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeah to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon this altar. In Gibeah the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream that night and said, Ask what I shall give thee. Now, just stop for a sec here. If you're reading carefully, you said, uh, Pastor, Solomon messed up. Solomon loved God, but he also had this idol problem. He did. And then God comes to him and says, Solomon, ask anything. Why? Because Solomon had extra mercy on him. Somebody else's kid would not have had God come to them, but Solomon was promised mercy by God because of David. The Bible says so many things about a faithful person is, is about a blessing. His children are blessed after him. And Solomon, God said, you know, Solomon, your requirements, you know, you, you, get, a, you get bonus points. You get extra lives. Um, uh, I'm trying to talk in your vernacular here to wake you up. And, and, <clears throat> and, uh, and, 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 and you know what? I have mercy on you. Okay. Solomon, you love me. Good enough. I'm not going to... What do you want? Because he's promised that because of what David did. It's a pretty good promise. Turning out pretty good. And uh, the Lord appeared unto Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon says, You've been so good to me, God. You, you've, he says, uh, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy, he knows it. According as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart uh, with thee, and thou hast uh, kept for him this 
great kingdom that thou hast given him a son and uh it's great kindness and given a son to sit on his throne as is his day and now O lord god thou hast made thy servant king instead of david my father and i am but a little child i know not how to go in or come out now watch the words here and thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen a great people it cannot be numbered for, uh, nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant understanding heart and judge a people that I may uh, discern between good and bad. <clears throat> for who is able to judge this uh, thy <clears throat> this thy so great a people? Notice he know God, these are your people. He's noticing his responsibility. Lord, these are your people. And Lord, you've given me these people to judge and i'm just a child i don't know how to do this god it's a great responsibility lord your people need a wise king and god said huh it's pretty awesome you won't you you didn't ask for <clears throat> great wealth you didn't ask for great treasures you didn't ask for all these blessings upon yourself you asked for wisdom to, to take care of my people my sheep i'm impressed you thought of me I'm going to bless you. And what does God do? God says, wow, impressed. In the speech, verse uh, 10, the speech pleased the Lord. There it is. The Solomon asked this thing, and God said to him, because thou hast not asked this thing, and and thou hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked riches for thyself, um, nor hast thou asked for the life of thine enemies, but as uh, but has asked for thyself understanding and to discern and to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. I'm going to give you that wisdom. And lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. And there's not going to be anybody like you who's ever going to have wisdom like you. And I have given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor. There shall not be like a king like you forever. And if you walk in my statutes, it's going to be amazed how you're blessed. Do you notice that? God did exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. He says, Solomon, you, you please me. You're thinking about the people. You're thinking about other people. You're thinking about the nation. You're thinking about my people. You didn't say, make me rich. Make my enemies all die. Give me a long life. Lord, make, make me have all these blessings. I'm uh, Solomon, you got that from your dad. You're thinking about me and my cause and other people and how much Israel needs a wise king. I like the man who doesn't look on his own things and, and thinks about my stuff. I'm going to give you that wisdom you asked for, but you know what? I'm giving you what you didn't even ask for. Amen. And God did it. You can find this principle in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I'll give you some other verses. Let's go to Psalms. It's a principle in the Bible. If you take care of the things of the Lord, the Lord takes care of you. <clears throat> God said to David, no thanks, but I'll build you a house. <laughs> David went to build God a house. God said, no, but he said, let me build you a house. But it's not going to be a physical one, David. I mean, bless your family. Psalm 37. And boy, I'm just going to do a sampling of verses here. <clears throat> Psalm 37. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Just trust in the Lord and do the right thing. God's going to bless you. Verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old. You have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his uh, seed begging bread. Let me go to Luke 18. We'll finish up there. I can read so many verses about this principle, but I just want to understand. How about thinking about God? How about thinking about other people? <coughs> And see how God might bless you. How about when God says, no, you just accept that he's wiser than you. The thing you thought would be the, the thing that just a home run. And it's not a bad thing. David wanted to build God a house. It isn't a bad thing. God says, it's not what I want. I guess, but, but I like what you ask. I'm going to give you this. And uh, Luke 18. <clears throat> and uh, verse uh, 28 then peter said lo we have left all and followed thee and he said unto him verily i say unto you there shall no man there there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of god's sake i was laughing there it never mentions in-laws because that's no sacrifice 
There is no man that left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. <laughs> That's what it says. Amen? Amen? So the principle is, look, you, when you care for the things of God, the Lord cares for your things. And he blesses you. You're so safe in it, and your life is so secure in the hands of God if you just seek God's kingdom first and please God. I'm not saying you're lazy and you don't work, and if you don't work, you don't need it. I get that. But I'm, I'm talking more advanced. If you can get your eyes off yourself, which you've been trained to do like I have, and it's our society, we're trained to be self-centered. If I'm doing good, the whole world's good. And, uh, and begin to think about others and think about God and just start helping others and, and, and prioritizing God and pleasing God. Pleasing God. Then you'll find out God will please you. And God, God will bless you above what you want. And don't be one of these bitter, petty people if God says no. Trust him. He knows his best. It's okay to ask for something. It's okay. But but trust the Lord and just think about God. Because God, God gets thought of so little that when someone thinks of him and isn't just doing the mandatory, where's the line? What's the rule? What do I have to keep? What's the minimum? How many times a week do I have to go to church to please you, God? God says, brother. And, and you get the, the mind of Christ, which he didn't look upon himself. He looked upon the needs of others. And, 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 he had the, and, and Jesus saying, I, I did the will of my Father who sent me. I love him. And I please God. I please my Father. When you get that mindset, and you, you start thinking about the Lord and, and not just about yourself. And you, you really get that. When, when somebody actually pleases God and impresses God, God says, I'm going to bless you. That's what he does. And we see this in, this in this story here. And so David wanted to build God a house. And it's funny, God says, nah, but I'm going to build you one. <laughs> and and so that, that that's that's an awesome thing and uh, praise god all right let's pray oh thank you the word you spoke to me and, and this truth was really a blessing to me just studying it out and seeing how you do this and how solomon did the same thing and how david is david is blessed and just having them the right mindset like you have it's what you're like it's it's the way you are but lord we're not always good at that and i pray tonight that we would uh please you. I pray that we would put you first. I pray we trust you when you don't give us what, what we ask for, that you can give us what's best. And we just look to you and trust you with all of our hearts. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That really means something deep, Father. And thank you for that. And may tonight, if you spoke to us, may we do what we ought to do to please you. And thank you for the word and all it shows us. In Jesus' name.